algo que te recuerde. Ajá, uh -huh, sorry. That's me. Well, wow. uh, I'm, I'm a team leader at the uh, new school, team at Recorder and also head of education. And today I'm going to talk about from impulse to warp speed, uh, Sphinx to Elasticsearch. I usually put a, a joined in links or something, but this, you know, this is all I found for this talk. It's, it's huge. Make it shorter. Anyway. Uh, so why? Why would you go from Sphinx to Elasticsearch, or why would you even go you know, from anything to Elasticsearch? Well, for us, it, it was this. So, New School, it's a, everybody knows what New School is, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have this uh, well list of ads where you can uh, you know filter a lot of stuff. So. Let's say you have, a, I don't know, a million Kunas, and you want to buy a S-Class. You don't want to buy something like this. Or maybe you don't want to buy a Coupe. You want to do you know, another type. You want to filter by price and everything else. So this was done uh, directly from MySQL, directly from MySQL, all the filters and everything, and it uh, became slow. <coughs> Actually, we, we optimized a lot of my, uh, MySQL. Uh, we even had uh, peer reviews with uh, Percona, and they said, you know, you're doing the best that you can do. There, there's, you cannot go faster. And the problem was that if you put, you know, a lot of these combinations, a lot of things, it uh, it got it could got uh, really slow. So we had to do something. Uh, we used uh, Sphinx for search, so we thought, okay, we have Sphinx, we know Sphinx, so we'll try it. There's even a Sphinx RT, like Sphinx real time. They have real time index because normal Sphinx just you know have to index it, but it it lasts for some time, so you don't have real time. But they also have real time Sphinx, so we tried with that. But uh, the thing is, the problem. Our problem with things was that uh, when it, you know, when it was made for the first time, how did it started? It started the whole idea, you know, for things was we want to be full text search, and that was that. And other searches then added a lot of other uh, uh, things, so things also added. So we can do all of this that we need also through things, but the API is is. It's horrible, you know. Like like my CTO says, Sphinx is a typical Russian product. You know, it's it's robust. It can do everything. It's very fast, but you have to do a lot of manual work, and you you'll you know you'll die doing the manual work. But Elasticsearch, uh, when he was designed and started working on it, the people you know they their idea was they want to support unstructured search. They want to support structured search. Analytics and you know, combination of all of that, and all that in real time. I'll get to that near soon. And uh, not just that, Elasticsearch has uh, basically you don't have to think how to you know how to do a cluster or, or how will you. You know, if your uh, traffic grows, how will you grow your Elasticsearch? Because it's all in there, it's all automatic. Basically, with Elasticsearch, you can just install it and use it. You don't have to set up anything. It will you know, run all the default values. It probably won't be good for some big thing like Nushkola, so you have to do something manually. But basically, if you want to you know, go and play with it, it it offers all of this just out of the box. You don't have to, you know, oh, I'll, I don't know. In Sphinx, I want, I don't know, I want the title to be, to have more weight than description. I'll just add title 10 more times in the index so it will, you know, it will have more weight or something. You don't have to do any tricks. It's, it's uh, very easy to set up. So how does Elastic, yeah, so. When I saw what Elastic could do, so I, I came to this conclusion. And now, how does Elastic do that? Well, basically, 
it's uh, from the start I mean you can run it in one node but it's not meant to be run in one node uh, you have nodes and uh, so each of these shards holds the documents that you uh, store in Elasticsearch each shard has a has its own replica usually on another node so it's you know safer if this node crashes then this replica will become the the primary shard you know, and stuff uh, the thing is this is all done automatically there's a setting that's really uh, important because uh, Elasticsearch if you you know just install it it will look for everywhere on the network where you can find any other Elasticsearch and if it has the node of the same name it will just connect it, copy the data and everything. So we did it uh, when we first installed it, you know, we were doing something and a colleague of mine was doing something else and he said, where? Where's my ad? I just saved the ad and there was no ad because I, I opened that ad and deleted it because you know I had my version of Elasticsearch, he had his version of Elasticsearch locally but we were on the same network and he just found it and synced everything and that was it. So there's a very peculiar, uh, but basically it was done so you don't have to do anything but you know if that's not a setting that you want to run on production because if you connect something else here you're gone. Uh, but basically, uh, if you want to read something from Elasticsearch, you know, if the data is on chart one, you can read it from here, from here, anywhere your request comes. So it's it's quite fast. Uh, I'm gonna go well, quickly through this, and then maybe if you have questions, I can go through more details because it's a short lecture. Uh, but basically, the main thing of the Elasticsearch is that it Elasticsearch just writes. There's, there's no updating or editing of the data that's inside. If, uh, if, if you have a record and then you change something in the record, in that record, you basically add a new record with a changed data, and this record is just uh, marked as uh, deleted. But it's not deleted at uh, that time. It just you know, the, the Elasticsearch won't use it. You will use the new record, and it has this. Uh, buffer where he has all transactions and when the transactions buffer fills it will just do some merging and clean up of the old records that are deleted so it does that you know, periodically but the thing is when you write to it you know you just write new data you don't have to update anything uh, check it so it's really fast and they they really optimize the usage of uh, input output on the disk and everything so it's uh, to us it was really fast what else does Elastic have? Well, it has a very, very nice API, API uh, compared to Sphinx. Now I'm gonna look, I don't know if you, if anybody, is there anyone who didn't see From Dusk Till Dawn, the movie? The, when, when Tito goes, we have this, 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 is no, I'm gonna go like this. So you have, you have API for creating an index, for uh, getting data, uh, documents, uh, checking if it exists, delete, update, multi-get, uh, bulk, basically in this bulk, you know, it sounds the same, but this is just, you know, get me a lot of documents. This is do any number of commands different just in a bulk, you know. So basically we use this, for example, if you have a index, currently running index, you want to change the mapping on the index, you can do a new index. But basically you set an application that it doesn't read directly from the index, but it can use an alias. So Elasticsearch uh, supports aliases. So you can, basically your application can always communicate with the same uh, interface, you know, with, I don't know, for ads, you can have ads. Alias that shows, uh, that uh, uses, I don't know, ads one, ads version one, and you can do ads version two, change the mapping, fill it, you know, sync it, and then using the bulk, you can just say, uh, you know, in a, an atomic uh, operation, just switch the index, uh, switch the alias, alias from uh, ads version one to ads version two, and then you have atomic uh, switch without anything, without any change in the in the application. Your application just starts to use the new index with new mappings and everything else. So it's it's pretty it's powerful and 
it's really well thought of. Other things that Elasticsearch has, it has, it has map, map, mapping API, mapping API, sorry. Uh, so basically, uh, in its essence, Elasticsearch is unstructured. You can put anything inside, but you can define structures. If you don't define the structure, anything you put inside, he will look at the, the values and he will try to automatically say, uh huh, this is a text, this is a number, this is a know, geolocation or something, and try to index it you know, automatically. But you can say, you know, I don't know, add ID is a number, uh, location ID, something, something is a geolocation coordinate, blah. So you can, you know, put your own mappings and force Elasticsearch to use those mappings so you can easily search on those fields. We have Analyzer API, which basically, for example, if you have text, uh, well, basically on any field, but you usually use it for text, you can run, as you write the, the document in, the, in Elastic, so a value, before it's written in Elastic, it will pass through the Analyzer, so you can do a lot of stuff. For example, you can uh, install Huntsville for Huntsville plugin for creation, or for example, if you I don't know, want to work for Chinese or for our neighbors, you basically, for example, servants, uh, you can write their uh, Cyrillic thing. You can just send it to Elastic and use this plugin that will simply translate it to uh, Latin with the, all the the characters support and everything, so it's really great. You don't have to do anything. This thing here, uh, I found that there was some dudes from, uh, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's fair or it's, I think it's philosophy. They, they like uh, analyzed the 10,000 uh, Croatian uh, newspaper articles and uh, pull out the uh, grammar for them. So they, they pulled the, uh, all the grammar rules, so we didn't have to do anything, you know, no stop words, anything. It's all already available on the net, so you just install it, that's it. It's the same thing that uh, Ubuntu uses. And they use newspaper articles, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can remove it, but you have, you know, you have already... Is it with a like stammer that finds the root of the word? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has stammers, yeah. So, I just continue now. Uh, so, Elasticsearch, well, you can search, right? Uh, you can use it to, to suggest things. You can have aggregations. I mean, you, you can, well, basically with, for example, I don't know, with Sphinx, how we used to do it, you know, you search something, then you, you know, you manually aggregate it by, I don't know, for example, for ads, by categories, and then you, Again, search to count how many uh, search results are in this category, in this category, and everything else. You basically do that all manually. With Elasticsearch, you don't have to do that. You can, you know, you have, when you search, you just say, okay, search me by this, but also do this aggregation. So, you know, give me by, I don't know, by, by this and this uh, filter, aggregate how many things there are, give me a counter, give me an average price. So you, you can have like, I don't know, fetch all the salaries for uh, senior developers, and then in aggregation you can say, but give me an average of, I don't know, six and seven months in 2014. And he'll do it automatically because he already searches it, he has it somewhere here, so he'll pull that data also out, so it, he will do it faster than you by hand on some other method. No? So it's, it's really cool. Has geolocation. It basically has three uh, three types of calculating the distance. There's that you know, the world is a flat surface. That's one. That's the fastest. It has that you know, the world is a sphere, but that's quite slow. And it has some middle thingy that's quite not, not as fast as the flat surface, but it's quite fast and it, uh, it's pretty accurate. And also it has a percolator that's basically stored searches. You, know, you can say I, I'm interested in this and each time a new document that uh, matches that search, he, he'll just, you know, he will uh, react and 
yeah, you will find it there in the percolator. So uh, I just went quickly through the features because I'm, well, I'm expecting questions. Uh, but I just want to tell you also how we did, you know, the jump from the ample speed to the to warp speed. So we basically did. Smooth transition. You know, we feared maybe you know he, he needs to warm up the cache or something. But basically, this was done in like you know, in some 15 minutes, I think, or so. You know, like I think we did 3 percent, 5 percent, then 20 or something. Then blue. So it, it really. So these are. I don't know if you can read. Uh, this was going to my scale. Precision. This is going to Sphinx. Uh, sorry, elastic. Yeah. There was, you see, that's the average time. It got a bit slower. We already we went past the the hundred milliseconds. And it's like, no, how? But then it, it okay. It doesn't show the whole graph, but it it went down. You know, just had a bit of. So my advice, if you're going, to try to go a little slower than us. You know, so you won't get this. Come down easily, and uh, okay, he, he can tell you the other image. So basically, the average time for searching was like 17 milliseconds for three days, and then uh, you know this was the first days I was, I was all nervous and everything. And then just I, I saw the graph and it was like oh, it's going up, it's it's gone, you know, the, it's gonna be awful, and then. He came and told me, wait, zoom out, look, it, it jumped from 17 milliseconds to 18, calm down. You know, so so it basically, it, it really is, uh, so this is you know, the fastest searches. These are, the blue is the average of everything, and the green is average of uh, lower 90%, yeah. And these are the slowest searches. Before, when somebody you know, did this, this would last for like, 10, 15 seconds or anything. So, and especially if someone did search, search, search and then just stack them on the MySQL, that was a catastrophe. So basically now we have, you know, if it's, 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 if it's really, really complicated, it's still very fast. So we're, we're very happy with it. And this is like, I searched through the logs to find the, you know, whoops, the, the heaviest week. And that was it. So we were quite happy with it. What was no. your uh, average before? Do you know those things? Mm, I I didn't get clearance to show that, okay. <laughs> but I can tell you later. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a couple of homework for you, if you're interested in Elastic. Well, first of all, what uh, helped me, and that's uh, you have training. So Elastic, the the company that uh, does Elastic. Uh, they have trainings. I can show you. Uh, for example, the, the nearest one currently is in Berlin. I went to Munich. Uh, it's and basically now they uh, they separate. They had this uh, core training uh, before for everything. Now they have core training for developers and core training for uh, for sysadmins. But basically, I went to this core training for everything, and it's if if you ever want to see a perfect example of you know German efficiency, that's the training. Uh, so th there were one German guy, one German girl, two days from nine to five. They said everything. They exactly on time. All the questions was answered. They knew everything. It was just perfect. But you really in those two days. You can really, you know, learn like two months of, you know, going on your own and uh, trying stuff. So it really, I mean, it's it's not that cheap, but it's uh, it really pays off if you want to do something fast. Next thing is uh, they have documentation. It's very good. It it covers everything. It's here, and they have a lot of webinars. I. I basically subscribe to every to each one of them. I never watch them, but they send me a link later, so I download it. And, and it's good. They, they send you a link with the video of the webinar, and you know, 
there's a link for documentation on that thing. There's a similar webinar here. To, it's they're really very good at you know ex explaining things and helping you start. And another thing that worth mentioning is uh, Chrome plugin for Elastic. It's called Sense. It's still in beta, but uh, it works very well. I think I have it open here. Talks. Yeah, this is like webinars. Okay, uh, I'm offline. But basically, I don't know if you can see, uh, you, know, you can write directly, uh, just write down the server and you just you know, write queries directly to Elastic. You have answers here, so you can really test stuff out and it has auto completion, everything. It's very good. And to us, the the default uh, PHP, sorry, the default PHP plugin uh, was very good. That Elastic. So Elastic on his page, he has you know, supported plugins for each language. So basically, the default that the they recommend for PHP, it, wor it works very well for us. And basically. That's it. Do you have any questions? Um, you mentioned indexes. Those are like databases in SQL or tables in SQL. Uh -huh. So, uh, well, basically, yeah. You, you can look at it as a table in uh, MySQL. You have, you know, when you define the mapping, it, basically when you create an index, you define a mapping. You can uh, change that mapping, but you can just add new mapping. You cannot change existing. You have to create a new index for that. But that uh, that procedure that I mentioned, if you if your application just communicates with with an alias, you, you're basically you know, so you're safe. Start one is one index. Uh, well, no, it doesn't have to be. You know. It, Linux can have, uh, by default, uh, I think it has uh, five shards. Yes. So this, this could all be one index? Yeah. Uh, so on that training... One document, not one index. No, this, uh, actually one shard is one Lucene index. Okay. But, uh, you know, Elastic is on top and it uses a lot of them. Uh, I don't know, we're currently, a lot of things is by default. Basically, on that core training, I was there and like, I was like, you know, we have 10 million ads. Will that fit? How many do we, you know, we have category of, of ads, maybe for each category, one index, will it, uh, and they just look at me, 10 million. One index will, you know, will take care of that for, you know, a couple of years for you. Because there were people like, I don't know, some guy from, uh, from Turkey, he had like, Eight million records daily, and he was just you know doing that through Elasticsearch with no problem. So like, I have ten million ads, big deal. They they were really you know looking at me like yeah yeah you're just some small kid. So it it really it works good. And the thing is with the with these nodes, if you add more nodes, it will not speed up. So basically, what you do with the mappings, there are a lot of we don't have time now, but uh, there are a lot of you know tricks that you can do in mappings. For example, you don't have to store all the data and stuff because it's going to be slower. Just store what you need. But uh, basically, what you you know configure with the mapping, the speed that you get, that's it. If you add more nodes, basically you're just adding more uh, okay, more safety, but more to output. You know. You, you, more people will be able to read from your uh, index, but it will not be faster. It will be the same speed, but it will. No, uh, yeah. The same, but you yeah. Have more, more traffic will go through. Would you trust it to, to be a primary source of data? Uh, no. I mean, it is. Uh, so basically, it's not a new school. But, uh, uh, everything that's, you know, that comes into the shard, it's also written to the disk. So basically, if, it, if everything crashes, you can just, you know. On my sequence. Yeah. No, no, no. 
not the new school, but Elasticsearch stores everything also on disk. So if it crashes, you can uh, recreate everything from the disk. But uh, I found a lot of people on the net that had problems with it and don't recommend it using it as uh, primary storage. So we didn't read. the bottom of those, why those certain spikes occurred? Is it like machine related or? Aha, uh -huh, no, no, no. It's, uh, well, wait. No, wait, wait, I'm going to show it here. So the, the normal thing is, you know, give me all cars uh, below 100,000 kunas, and that spike was, you know, turn everything on or some crazy combination and then you get, you know, it has more things to search. Basically that's it. And basically it, uh, it has some, so they've shown you, uh, on the training they show me the formula, it's some integral with, you know, crazy stuff there. They have uh, natural algorithm. Uh, uh, there's there's a lot. There's a huge formula that uh, calculates the the you know the weight of the of the terms inside. But also there's some quasi uh, artificial intelligence that you know just uh, what do you search and then aha. Uh -huh, so I'll catch this first and then this later because you more search this and stuff. So basically, I think that you know those searches that are not so much used, and if it's if it's a bit complicated, then they're the peaks, yeah. Uh, do you have any experience with solar? Uh, no, we, uh, so basically I had, I was watching solar and Elastic, and Elastic was newer, it had a prettier API, so we went for that. It's not that, I mean, they can both do the same thing, but Elastic is just more. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, Elastic has great documentation yeah, there. So, plus yeah. What's my hurry to connect? Which driver? Elastic search slash. Yeah, I think so that. I, I mean, you ba you basically go to elastic.com and you know just. Lives and you find it. So it's the one. The entire index, I guess, has to fit in RAM, and that's why it's best. Or uh, well, basically, it doesn't have to fit. Um, yeah, it does have to fit. When uh, you can, uh, the thing is, uh, it it's not exactly like MySQL tables, MySQL tables, because you can, if you have like I don't know, one billion records, you'll probably you know split them I don't know in ten indexes. With uh, yeah. But uh, if you send a request to Elasticsearch and say, you know, search through these 10 indexes, this thing, he will just send them to them. They will find, uh, yeah, and uh, just they will return the results to the, the first node that sent the request. He will just merge them and return you the results. So it's not, uh, it's not that slower if you, split things into indexes, into more indexes. And uh, so I think the, they recommend that you don't put more than 32 gigs of RAM per one index, you know, memory. So, uh, the, sorry, 30, yeah, 30. Do you use the ancient proxy so the last? How much RAM does it have? Sorry? So you have about 30 gigs per node or per index? Uh, sorry, yeah, per node, per node, right, yeah. No, HTTP. Uh, yeah, the thing is with Elastic, uh, it has no security. So basically, what that German guy said, we could have either gone and do security, you know, the way it's done, but then you wouldn't have all these features because because we wouldn't have time because we would be doing security all the time, or we could do, you know quasi-security that wouldn't be secure, or we can do none of security and tell you you don't have security. So basically they opted for the last option here. No security, that's it. So if you want to have it somewhere publicly available, you, you got to do some proxy or something. Yeah.
Anything else? One more question. How much does it cost? How does that work? Uh, it's free. It's free. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, they charge so they no, they, they don't charge anything. They they charge the training. I mean, you can I don't know. you can pay me. I'll train you. Know, so they won't charge you. But if you want their trainers, they'll uh, they'll charge you. And I I recommend that because they're they're really 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 good, especially those. Well, basically I know those. Those two that uh, were training in Germany, I'm not sure if they train everywhere. And uh, they have hosted Elasticsearch, so they charge that. You, know, you can basically tell them, I have this type of data, I want to do this, Those, these are the performance that I want, and they'll set it up and just charge you. you know. Did you have any issues with it because it's written in Java, or it's not? No. I mean, we didn't. You don't feel we didn't see uh, Java at all, so we just. Thank you. Do you yeah, know, it has a very nice. Or, uh, Sorry. Or open JDK or Oracle. No, open JDK or running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything is in documentation. They have, uh, you know, recommended versions for each version. With each uh, new version of Elastic, they also. Uh, put out the new versions of uh, libraries for each language, which, which is tested and they guarantee that it works with all the features with the new app and everything, API and everything. So they basically, they, they take good care of it. Yeah? Uh, so basically you have cluster and you're writing to uh, which node? So they, they yeah, you don't have to think about it unless it does everything. So basically, you just you know, you send the request. It gets to any of the nodes. They have some load balancing. I'm not sure how it how it you know, how it balances the stuff, but uh, you can you can configure everything. Yeah. But basically, it you know it finishes on it finishes on one node. And uh, sorry, if so I guess the majority of nodes has to be online in order. Yeah, if, if that node has a shard that has that document, he will do it. If not, he will, each node knows the, the whole structure of the uh, cluster, so he will just send that request to the next, uh, to the node that has the shard, and then he will do the job and say, you know, I'm done, I'm done, that's it. So the node is not available or shard is down, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, no, no. That's the, the greatest thing. Uh, you also mentioned something like load balancing and everything. It, it would take in the, the cluster IP, uh, the IP addresses of each node in the driver itself, and it does. It knows which which is the master for yeah. any shard. It does fail over load balancing and everything else yeah. from the driver itself. So. And, and if you want to be, uh, you know. Yeah. Sounds like major that the driver itself is still split. That's why you have to have three nodes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they also, if you, they, they said that if you're, uh, if you're afraid that you know your node is going to be doing a lot of writing, uh, reading, and it maybe freezes or something, it won't be able to, you know, receive requests. You can basically do if you have enough money. You know, you can do, uh, you can just put nodes that don't do any reading and writing, that don't hold any shards, they're just used for receiving requests and knowing you know, where, where to send them, which one is up. So basically, I mean, th that question that you said, you, know, you have to have at least three. Uh, you know, it, that guy from Turkey that has uh, eight uh, billion records a day, he has money like, you know, like one word that I cannot say. So basically he has like, you know, Hundred servers, three nodes. So basically, they're you know they're doing that for big things where you have where you don't think I have to have three nodes. You have like three hundred nodes. So it's not. But we're okay with three nodes. With five, yeah, it's it's nice. Could you maybe elaborate on the security bit more? What does it mean about security? They don't have any security, so you know you send the request. That's it. If you're on production and say uh, delete index, there's no index. There's no checking anything. You know anyone who can get to the API, he can do anything he wants. Similar to MySQL, for 
Sorry? Yeah, but you have permissions and users and everything. You don't have, you don't have users' permissions. They, uh, Elasticsearch does, uh, uh, now I, I forget the name. They have, I think it's, it's not Sentry, it's something. They have this thing that's, it's called somehow. Uh, but uh, which uh, provides you with security, but that's uh, that you have to pay. So it's it's a plugin that gives you all the security features that you need, but you have to pay for it. Okay, you rely on the system or something else. You can do. Uh, yeah, I mean you're, you're not going to put the API out so that anyone can. You know, you're going to use it through the application or something. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? You may know the alternatives with uh, companies like Mobile, but uh, what they use, um, they, do they use the same, same technology? The bigger? Mobile, but the... Mobile. Yeah. It's classified in... It's classified in German, uh -huh. German market. Uh, well, I'm not sure what they use. We're, we're pretty satisfied with this, and it's, well, they treated us like you know, you have 10 million records, so I guess we'll we'll stick with this for a long time. Do you use the to build the set search, or do you use the build the backend? So that's a uh, you have uh, filters. Yeah. Do you get filters from the set best from? Uh, well. Currently, uh, well, not yet. That's, that's the best answer. Not yet, but we'll basically less can give us all that, but we just have to find, you know, time and resources to switch everything. So but, should we have on the stage that these things to be lost? Uh, mm, we switched from things. So we basically used for one category, we used uh, things RT. And we were not satisfied with it, so that's gone. That's replaced with Elastic, so we did switch from Sphinx to Elastic. But uh, this thing, uh, by the side, they are still fetched from MySQL. But they don't do much problem, so it's not that urgent that we switch to them. But we will. And basically, the, those uh, transition that I show you, uh, basically, you know, you just apply a bit of the domain during design and stuff. So we just have, you know, you have a repository and there's just one, well, we call it list mapper. It just reads from your data store. Everything else was the same. We just had a cookie that said, you know, you're either using this list mapper, the MySQL, or you're using Elasticsearch. So we just you know, use the cookie to switch uh, customers from one to another. It was really easy and painful, uh, yeah, painless, <laughs> so <laughs> painful. No, really, we didn't have any problem. We just, you know, launched it easily. No, there was nothing, so really, it was good. <laughs>